Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Cousins on Comics. I'm your half host, Nathan, and today we'll be reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man number 62. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this issue picks up exactly where we left off with Gog and Boomerang still talking to some chicks in the park. We get a really cool shot of Kingpin working from the shadows as he talks about how annoying Boomerang has been and how he's been interfering with his plans. He decides, if you can't hurt him, hurt what he loves, which is a super cool line. We watch as Bullseye takes the shot, but it's not exactly what we thought it was. Bullseye aims at Gog's collar. So Gog wears a collar that keeps him confined down to a relatively smaller size. When that collar is removed, he expands and he gets real big. As soon as the device around Gog's neck falls to the ground, he begins to increase in size exponentially. His strength seems to know no bounds as he demolishes nearby buildings as Spidey races to the scene in his new suit. All while this is happening, armed officers close in on Boomerang at the park. They too are hunting the reformed villain. At the last second, Boomerang hurls the collar in the air towards Spider-Man just as he swings by. Spidey presses a button on the collar and it also increases in size, matching the neck of Gog. With a Hail Mary throw, he manages to reunite Gog with his collar, returning him to his house pet size. Spider-Man dashes for Gog and realizes that this is the one responsibility he's been avoiding for a really long time. Having someone depending on you is worth it. You get a really cool little montage here where you kind of look back on Peter's life and um, his experience with Gog and kind of realizing that maybe it's a kid he's actually been needing this whole time. So that's like a really cool little uh, insight into Peter's mind I thought was really cool. The comic then shifts back to Robbie and Randy, entering an elevator to a restaurant downtown. Right before the door closes, however, good old Jake Jonah Jameson sneaks his way in. Robbie Robertson, there you are, Jameson says with a big grin on his face. Jonah, Robbie returns. Jonah then goes on and on about how great his new media platform is doing. He is so happy to have ran into the Robertsons, now he can gloat to the man who now holds his old job. He even puts his arm around Randy and like tries to get him to write some articles for him. Robbie finally has enough with JJ and his BS and says, I don't think that's a good idea. Jonah is stunned. He does not, he is, he's not used to getting rejected. You don't. Wait, what? Jonah says. Look, I'm very happy for you. It seems like the culture finally caught up to your sensibilities. In other words, he's saying, yeah, I guess the world's actually getting as crazy as you are. But that's not really the kind of thing that we do at the Bugle anymore, Robbie says gently. Robbie Robertson obviously has a better heart than J. Jonah Jameson. From here, the conversation turns into a one-man screaming match. That man, of course, being J. Jonah Jameson. He claims Robbie is jealous of his new job and thinks he's better than Jonah. And of course, Robbie doesn't think any of these things. The comic then shows a quick scene of MJ pet-sitting Gog for a bit while Boomerang lays low. Boomerang is furious at Fisk and wants payback. Fisk might be mayor, but he's still just a criminal with a super cool ascot. And criminals are cowardly, superstitious lot, no matter how well-dressed they are. So I will become what he fears the most. Yes, father, I will become a boomerang. To which Spidey says, oh boy. The comic then shifts again to Fisk as we see him say, I have him now. I think this is like in some way he can see kind of like what's happening with Boomerang, maybe. Um, but he says this to someone in the room and that someone is Kindred. So Kingpin actually has kin Kindred in some kind of a uh, cage. We next see the comic shift again and this time it fluctuates between the villain Tombstone and with Robbie Robertson. The two have a history that goes way back. Uh, from Tombstone's perspective, he gets in a vehicle to be taken to a certain spot where he plans to kill one of Boomerang's roommates. Tombstone comments that Kingpin specifically said to leave Peter Parker, the other roommate, alone. From Robbie's perspective, he sits at his desk and has a conversation with the secretary, Glory. They talk about how they need to uncover a new story to which Gloria hands him an envelope. She says something to the effect of that they might have that very thing here in the envelope. 
she makes a comment that she doesn't want to spoil it for him, which is kind of strange because she obviously knows the contents within. And for her to make a comment like that, I thought was just kind of strange. So we see that what's inside of the envelope is actually Robbie's son, Randy, and he's locking lips with Tombstone's villainous daughter. So that's what's the big reveal uh, in the envelope. So like I said, that last panel shows the two kissing on top of the rooftop, to which we see Tombstone's actually there witnessing it, and there's photographs being shown to Robbie Robertson uh, at his office of the two, obviously in a relationship, to which Tombstone is upset, he does not want them two together, and also Robbie Robertson is also upset, he doesn't want them dating either. So things are definitely heating up between these characters. It's interesting that we kind of have this whole forbidden love aspect of the story. These three roommates really have a lot going on in their lives. You got Peter Parker as Spider-Man, you got Boomerang, uh, and then you got Randy Robertson, who's dating this villain who's his father's arch enemy's daughter. So all in all, I think this is gonna be shaping up to be a very interesting conclusion. I don't know exactly for how much longer we're going to be seeing the suit that spider-man's in it's pretty cool so that was a review for the amazing spider-man number 62 legacy number 863 again for any of you purists out there thank you so much for tuning in guys as always you can find us on instagram facebook cousins on comics also check out staircase stories our ongoing anthology horror podcast don't forget to like and subscribe Come back next week and we'll be reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man number 63. I'll see you guys next time.